Yeah, guys, today we are going to discuss about prescriptive analytics and subsequently what are all the way we can start identifying or start doing this analytical process called prescriptive analytics. So very first, just let us start with the prescriptive analytics can work standalone, can be combined with descriptive analytics, can be combined with the predictive analytics. We all know that what is descriptive analytics, what is predictive analytics. These two things are from the historical data or monumental data. We take the historical data, we analyze. We take the monumental data, and we analyze. Descriptive analytics will be of most of the time. Yep, no. It is all about what went in, what had happened in order to understand the past, absolutely past, that is called descriptive analytics. There are several measures, coefficient of covariation, coefficient of variation and central tendencies and range standard deviation and interquartile range. Uh, these are all those stuff fall into, fit into descriptive analytics. Then subsequently, Predictive analytics also comes from the historical data or monumental data. However, that is helpful for the prediction. It helps for both the prediction as well as analyzing the past history. So from the past, it is possible to analyze the present or the future. So that is the use of prescriptive analytics sorry predictive analytics now we are moving on to prescriptive analytics what is the uh, support of prescriptive analytics is it all about predicting about the future so this is for recommending two tasks carried out by predictive prescriptive analytics future recommendations and decision makings so these are all the two stuff supported by prescriptive analytics decision making and future recommendations. So these two things, it is supportive. So now how to do prescriptive analytics? There are several ways to do. It is merely based on the context and based on the problem statement. What is all about going in the business scenario that decides you may combine at time descriptive analytics with the prescriptive analytics. You may combine with the predictive analytics with the prescriptive analytics or you may combine forecasting techniques, forecasting methods that would be your next unit. So forecasting technique with the prescriptive analytics or all the combinations also. This cannot be predicted easily. It is meant for the context or the situation, the prescriptive analytics. This is the set tone for today's discussion. <clears throat> you can uh, stand alone prescriptive analytics also you can do. The, given the situation, you can understand the scenario. You can use any of the optimization technique or any of the forecasting technique. There are two techniques. Uh, stand alone, you can take decision. The one is optimization. Optimization, there are several types of optimization technique. So next one is and forecasting technique. So using these two also, you can go directly with prescriptive analytics. So that's all. So this is the set agenda or the way of discussion today we are going to look at for a couple of minutes. What are all the way we are going to do? Access and explore data. Normally, the predictive analytics, I'm just recapping quickly. Subsequently, we are stepping into predictive analytics, uh, prescriptive analytics. So this is one of the picture I got it. It is uh, very awesome. This I got it from somewhere, some source. Pre pre predictive analysis workflow. So predictive analytics, how it starts, you can start gathering the data from files or you can start gathering data from database or you can start gathering data from sensors if it is of IoT enabled or sensors. Then pre-processing data. Very first 80% of the day, time, the data science story, the success is depending upon the pre-processing of the data. Working with the messy data, how to do data reduction transformation technique, feature extraction. So these are all the stuff you will be doing or taking it forward in the pre-processing technique. Subsequently, predictive model. This varies. Numerical prediction, then we discussed label prediction. Depending upon that, you may be creating some model. Then the moment you decide which model you want to build, why you are building that model, that justification is ready. 
then you will be going towards model creation. The moment the model is ready, you will be going for parameter optimization or hyperparameter tuning. Subsequently, you can go for model validation. So these are all the steps majorly involved in any model which you develop. Or you can go for before parameter optimization, you can go for model validation, then you can go for parameter tuning or optimization. Then you can come forward once again revalidation also. So depending upon the way you build the model. Finally, you need to integrate the analytics with the system. It may be an app or it may be your PC dashboard. So finally, why we are doing this all model is we need to deploy. We need to deploy into either website. Even if you are watching through app or if you are watching through uh, the desktop dashboard, you are finally in the position to deploy the model which you have built. We while Before deploying the model, we are exploring all the types of solutions in the uh, backend. So we need to sit and work in the offline. What are all the possible solutions for that particular um, method? So once if it is decided, then we are moving on to <coughs> deployment. So that the deployment can become mobile app. Again, you are deploying in only in the cloud services. The way in which the uh, paradigm only will differ. Then you can deploy to the web server or cloud server. So then Either you can access through mobile app or you can access through website. This is one method, a common method of uh, extending the application or use of data analytics. Subsequently, you will be going for embedded devices. What is that embedded devices is camera is one of the embedded device. Car is one of the embedded device. Washing machine is one of the embedded device. If you are having smart gas through touch sensor, something obstacle comes, then it will be coming. No, then how you are deducting that sensor value? Nowadays, you no need to switch on the gas. If you go and keep the vessel on the gas, automatically the flame will come. It will be sensing different metals or different uh, the object which is coming across that situation. So there are several pros and cons. Then automatic off is also possible. So these all devices you will be embedding to that particular uh, utilization or utility or vessels, whatever I can say. So our washing machine, AC. So AC also has some logic. It will sense the temperature accordingly. It will adjust. There are ACs nowadays available automatic. We no need to step up, step down the temperature when we are using AC. So automatically it will identify the room temperature. Then it will uh, go up and down depending upon that set range. So there are things available with the embedded logic. We are embedding the logic to the device. So the model or a model or data analytical model, whatever you do, finally you need to embed those things into the device. So what are all those devices? See, flight, lot of uh, logic uh, sensors are going. Then enterprise scale system, then car. So this is what embedded logic, embedded device is what your fifth unit all about. So you can have some idea right now, this moment onwards. As I mentioned in the last uh, uh, class, one of the class I mentioned, I, I think not for you. Uh, the thing which I mentioned is about uh, windmill. Windmill, there are wind tower. So there are wind tower, it is installed in my hometown. If you look at five years, 10 years ago, if I go to my native, I used to look at the tower. The 10 years ago, people used to operate. They will be changing the direction of the windmill tower, that fleet, that fan like tower. Then they will be changing or shutting down off, putting off or switching on. Those things are controlled by human. Nowadays, there is no human I could see nearby or around that. Then I was inquiring, then I came to know that it is completely automated. Three years or three years ago only I was questioning this. Ten years ago I have seen, then three years ago I was questioning. So what is the thing? Completely embedded devices. Device is <coughs> deployed. So using the past one year, two years history of data, so they will be analyzing the wind flow, wind speed or wind direction. So these are all the parameters they will be measuring through in which they will be identifying which direction need to be tilted, sensing and analyzing, taking decision. Then they will have the past history of data. If the wind flow is very lesser, 
operating those kind of uh, turbine, the, those kind of uh, mills or uh, lead to loss. What is the way loss is? If the wind flow is lesser, the electricity consumption for operating that wind mill becomes much more higher than the electricity produced by that wind mill depending upon the low wind flow. So why we need to operate? That leads to loss. No product, if not loss also, no gain, no gain, no loss. In those situations, smartly it needs to take decision, it needs to switch off the turbine. Then one more question, immediately within half an hour the wind flow rises, immediately it cannot switch on because switching on also leads to a lot of power uh, sucking and consumption. So the hut cleverly it needs to take decision based on the past history, also the present sensor data. It needs to work between the past and the present. So when it works on these two, past will give prescription past data analysis here it will give prescription the present data the present wind flow wind direction these all will give the decision making so every windmill the embedded device is taking decision based on two stuff one is the monumental data that also gives decision and prescription and the present sensor data so it needs to work on between these two this is how it works when it comes windmill so these are all said to be uh, see this windmill you can see embedded logic embedded devices and hardware now let us look into what exactly the prescriptive analytics prediction predictive analytics all about what will happen when it will happen why it will happen when anyone trying to answer towards these three questions then it is said to be uh, pred predictive analytics then decisions based on the predictive analytics we need to take decision how do we benefit from these predictions is called decisions effect how will these decision impact everything else in the future that is what prescriptive analytics so if you look at this windmill scenario also suddenly the wind flow reduces then if i switch off what will happen Suddenly, if I switch on, what will happen? What is the electricity consumption will go right and will go down or up? Everything I need to take calculation. After calculation only, the decision need to be taken within the device. So whether need to be frequently switched on, switched off, or need to be switched off for longer duration, if the wind flow or direction consists or continues for 20 minutes or 15 minutes, then only I need to switch on then even though it is switched off how that sensor need to work how the decision need to be decision logic is uh, um, same whether the uh, mill is operated or not the logic need to function so that is where uh, the prescriptive analytics comes to the picture so when it comes there are several techniques also you need to be aware edge computing fog computing because every windmill tower the proprietor or the owner of the tower mostly cine actors they are whom are installed then they are industrialists they are working in the abroad also they will be monitoring they will be watching and controlling the power consumption power produced per day everything through remotely then how it is possible so edge analytics then edge computing, fog computing, cloud computing, this all comes to the picture that uh, fall into different category. But however, you may need to have a fair idea about how prescriptive analytics is possible. Unless otherwise, these all comes to the picture, it is not possible. So you should have a clue or fair idea that is, is otherwise it will be blindfold. So whenever you are going for prescriptive analytics, then edge device, edge computing, for fog, fog computing or fog device and the cloud computing, these are all, or cloud lets. So these are all another section of uh, discussion. These all are only helping for uh, taking decisions. So that is where uh, these devices, these computational techniques comes to the picture. Next, where and all prescriptive analytics can be helpful. There is no uh, boundary for this. Any place you can use prescriptive analytics. It is comes into machine learning as a part, operation research, prescriptive analytics, computer vision, it is applicable, natural language processing, applied statistics, signal processing, image processing, mathematics. So these are all those, uh, sorry, meta heuristic. Whenever meta heuristic uh, comes, it is meta learning. 
learning about learning. For example, you want to transfer the weights and the learning of one model, half of the model. You want to, <coughs> you don't want to proceed further with the remaining model stages. Then you want to transfer everything. You need to understand what is a learning parameter. Then how you can couple or connect with the second model. So all how you can modify, how you can uh, cut off the particular model, then what is the logic you are bringing in to the analysis? So that situation meta heuristic uh, will be helpful. So these are all those situation prescriptive analytics is considered or taken place. As per Garner definition, prescriptive analytics, what and all the way you can do graphical analysis method, simulation method, complex event processing for this particular uh, situation. You may need to combine data from several sources. You may need to infer patterns and the model complex circumstances you need to consider. Then neural networks, it is useful. Recommendation engines, it is useful. Heuristics, alternative method of problem solving that can approximate an answer when finding a definite one phase. Then it needs to uh, find appropriate answer, approximate answer, at least something goes wrong also as i said one of the model you can build for three by fourth then you can cut down in that position then you can modify the logic or you can combine with any other model that is where the meta heuristic approach comes machine learning and optimization technique then every field prescriptive analytics is considered for example energy is the largest industry oil mining oil wells natural ga gas exploration in this situation what they do is they may be if we look at even if you are uh, going for oil industry as a beginner also you will be trained so every oil industry they will be hiring highly experienced uh, uh, profiles what they will be having experience they will be having data the moment oil well they will be calling well only so when it is drilled they will be taking into consideration because it will go for 10000 square feet 30000 square feet 25000 square feet 5000 square feet for borewell itself we can think of automation recent days so what is the way is there are sensors deployed whenever the machine is drilling through that sensors deployment it will try to understand the structure of the soil or parameters of the soil pH value of the soil, moisture, uh, that uh, gas, finding out what are all the types of gases it uh, releases because every layer uh, within the earth, if you start drilling, there are a lot of phenomena, a lot of hidden mysteries are there. We don't know what the combinations, what the compositions are there. Definitely, even if you find your water or if you find your oil or uh, gases, you can be able to find out certain ambience so that all can be recorded at what feet what kind of structure we underwent in the previous uh, mining so that all are the indicator whether we need to drill 30000 square feet or not the decision every minute every 100 feet once or every thousand feet once uh, need to be taken decision otherwise it is loss also Otherwise, it is damaging cost to the depletion layer of the earth also. So either way, if you want to be profited or if you want to stop damaging of the earth, the prediction or prescription is required every minute. As a human, we cannot see, we cannot drill. The moment the drilling machine is going in, we cannot go in also. We cannot survive because the oxygen level, temperature, the gas which is reduced, that may be harmful for the human being or blood flow anything may go wrong there is no guarantee for uh, uh, human survival so even they will be predicting human survival because we need to our time we may need to send humans also people also coal mining coal or gold mining you just go and read those histories a lot of uh, loss of human also happened every mining field is much more dangerous even if you look at uh, granite uh, mining everywhere there is a lot of danger. So those days there is no automation. Nowadays it is possible to find out something automated, something we can predict, we can take it forward towards prescription. <clears throat> That's all. 
So these are all the way 5000 to 30,000 feet below the surface they will be doing. So they will they can able to understand depositional characteristics, machinery performance, oil flow rate, reservoir temperatures and the pressures. So through in which they can take decisions. So they can be able to understand hydrocarbon data producing. It starts producing a lot of hydrocarbon the moment you start drilling seismic data. Well log data. What is that well log data only? I'm telling at what square feet, what kind of uh, ambience or circumstances are found and how it is relevant, how it is useful. So that kind of thing it is possible to predict. Yeah. So the next uh, you can uh, go for a mining well. Uh, if you are interested, you can start uh, reading this. So now it uh, prescribe specific recipes for how and where to drill complete and produce wells in order to optimize recovery minimize cost and reduce environmental footprint that is what i said uh, that will lead to lot of layer disturbance in the uh, earth the layer disturbance that lead to earthquake or any kind of unpredicted situation is possible now prescriptive analytics for hospital and clinics so how it is useful prescriptive analytics they will be looking at what are all the way the patient need to be uh, diagnosed. So it is a holistic well, <coughs> wellness checkup they will before undergoing the surgery. It is a customary procedure. They need to go for echo. They need to go for ECG, EEG, MRI. Uh, there are several scans and uh, there are several tests, bioparameters reading they will be doing. So they need to work out what is the way optimally the minimal cost and the better prediction and better cure how they can do the moment the surgery is happening the entire hospital operation that are set up need to be decision taken and the operate machines are operated continuously how best they can save the power and what are all the instruments they can keep it near there are several things they need to take decision so ultimately cost reduction but the best quality of treatment or welfare of uh, the patient. This is what they are aiming for in the health sector, especially American scenario. Many things Six Sigma is applied towards healthcare industry. So a lot of things uh, there it is taking place with automation than even Indian scenario. So that is where these are all the prescriptive analytics are helpful. So we need to go for optimization technique in that situation prescriptive analytics most of the time we need to go with optimization technique when you can do optimization is minimize and maximize with a lot of alternatives for example you can run your firm with one employee or two employee or three employee or four employee now you imagine you are going to uh, start uh, with a startup so how you are going to start a startup is based on how you look at you can hire only one employee you can pay a high uh, salary but what would be the problem something goes wrong with that guy either uh, uh, relieving or resigning resignation or that the person is not healthy not well for some duration personal agenda or not uh, prompting back quickly then you are in the unsafe zone then will you go for two employee the moment you go for two employee how you would be uh, optimizing uh, their uh, uh, workload their salary etc etc will be the next question mark so these are all the way the prescriptive analytics are helpful optimization means you need to work for minimizing the cost or maximizing the your uh, startup profit it has several alternatives when there is uh, there are several alternatives how you will be taking decision which path you will be going whether you are working towards minimization project or minimization of the uh, cost or maximization of the project with the several alternatives either one only minimization itself a lot of alternatives maximization itself a lot of alternatives so what way you will go then part of your project you are going for outsourcing or you are going for a building by within yourself. So what is the capability of your employee? What is the nature of the project delivery? All those stuff you need to analyze. That is where prescriptive analytics comes to the picture. Larger even software industry, they are doing this prescriptive analytics even for HR. 
they need to predict forecast the number of ongoing projects they need to predict and forecast the number of upcoming projects then they need to predict and forecast how many employees and what is the attrition rate and depending upon that how many need to be hired etc they will be working on so there also it is helpful uh, this concept called optimization technique or prescriptive analytics then lot of things determine best price advertising strategy here also you need to maximize revenue you need to reduce your advertisementing advertisement cost and you need to maximize the revenue what is ultimately why we are going for advertisement in order to promote our brand our business or the values increasing the value but we need to simultaneously we need to cut down the cost of the uh, expenditure involved in the advertisement what mode of advertisement we can go what is the expenditure and what would be the expected probability completely uncertain however you are promoting your business what is the guarantee that how many customers will turn up how many will uh, buy with you <clears throat> that all are need to be understood so optimal amount of cash to store in atm the next is how uh, best the cash optimal amount of cash you can store in the atm machine so best mix of investment in here retirement profile so what is the way you can managing the risk how you will investment how you will do during the retirement people may give you bulk amount of money maybe 5000 or 6000 something like that so how you will be uh, investing whether you are going for absolutely mutual fund or partially share or the partially partially gold so there are several ways you need to take decision which one will give the most profitable uh, thing in the near future what way you can gain uh, the profit these are all the stuff you can take decision that is where prescriptive analytics your own life it is useful you need to sit and calculate but perhaps you may not use mathematical you intuitively you will uh, forecast intuitively you take decision that is judgmental method or delphi method there are two different methods available qualitatively taking decision we are all the human we are working in everyday life optimization but we are working with judgmental approach intuitive approach or delphi method approach i will uh, shortly address in this technique in the fourth unit so now let us move on to the prescriptive analytics where so hope so with the several use cases you would have understood what is the use of prescriptive analytics how much should we produce to maximize profit what is the best way of shipping goods from our factories to minimize cost shipment so what are all the way you need to explore all the alternatives so that is where optimization techniques comes to the picture several alternatives if you go with this cargo services what would happen if you are going for freight services what would happen if you are going with the roadway services airway services through water ship services so there are several things you need to optimize so that is where should we change our plans if a natural disaster closes a supplier factory how much so how we can change the plan at <coughs> the moment the plan upgradation plan change everything need to be forecasted what is the optimal staffing to achieve a given profitability uh, pro profitability constraint by a fixed cycle cycle time so within 3 months of duration what is the optimal staffing <coughs> unexpectedly you may get a new project on so so how you can think of optimal staffing so that is another uh, area so market market so you you can go through this all the scenarios there are several scenario in your textbook also there are several it is given so optimal product mix to maximize profit constraint by fixed staffing so how you can uh, go for you may have only five staff but what are all the way you can uh, think of doing different businesses or you can think of uh, different businesses you can increase uh, the staffing also so all depending upon your decision making skill and your scenario so let us move on to the next topic since it is covered in the last session i am just giving quick recap now first we need to understand descriptive analytics what and all the thing can be answered through is how many loan acts were taken each of the past 12 months what was the total cycle time from act to close what was the distribution of loan profitability that all analyzing about the past history what is predictive what impact on loan volume will a given marketing program have how many processor or underwriters are needed for a given loan volume 
So these all called processes or underwriters are. Uh, there are several country. They will be uh, going with the legal documents, de legal writing for loan processing also. So such case legal writers are required. So what will a given process change reduce cycle time? So these are all those things related to predictive analytics. What is prescriptive analytics? What is the optimal stopping to achieve a given profitability constrained by a fixed cycle time? What is the optimal product mix to maximize profit constrained by fixed stopping? <coughs> These are all uh, fall or fit into a prescriptive decision model. Now let us move on to the prescriptive decision model. There are two types, deterministic model and stochastic model majorly. So within that stochastic model, um, there are several categories. Within the deterministic model also, there are several categories. Within the deterministic model, sorry, stochastic model, certainty and uncertainty. There are two categories will come into the picture. What is certainty and uncertainty? Let us uh, look at one by one. If you consider, if you know the certainty, it is termed as deterministic model. So you are trying to tell, say 5,000 units per month, you are going to produce something in your factory. So you could be able to predict approximately 5000 pieces of uh, metal pieces you are able to capable of producing. That is called deterministic model. On the other hand, suppose if you have evidence to indicate. If, if you are uh, having evidence to indicate within this range, 3200 pieces or units to 6800 units or pieces you can do. You know your inventory capacity, you know your staffing capacity based on that. You know the electricity consumption or electricity uh, power supply nearby your area. Anything what product you are using or manufacturing time per unit manufacturing time all together put together. You know that. Then you need to take decision between these band 3200 to 6800. So that is where stochastic model comes to into the picture. It is not definite. It varies from minimum to maximum. Imagine if you are running a power uh, some factory depending upon solely on electricity power supply. We cannot predict especially in our country the electricity power supply fluctuation. Then it may go up and it may go down. Depending upon your uh, uh, power fluctuation, you can take decision. If at all power supply goes worst scenario in this week or in this month, this would be the minimum amount of production. The power supply will be regular. Assuming that then the, you can put a norm. This is the maximum capacity of production. So within that you need to find out what is a maximizable profitability. How you can maximize? What is the way shifting you can do? Whether uh, evening duty, overtime, what is the way you, are, you can do schedule your factor, your staffing? All put together, it is called prescriptive analytics. Then that comes into stochastic model because nothing is determined. It varies. It's all fully dependent upon the electricity power supply. Let us assume in your case. Next, how the prescriptive analytics can be calculated? What are all the methods available? Linear optimization technique, integer optimization technique, decision analysis, non-linear optimization technique, non-smooth. This is much more tougher the, uh, depending upon the mathematical and <coughs> expertise of the person goes tougher, tougher, tougher in the next level. Optimization models with uncertainty. These are all the five major category uh, which are available in your syllabus. We need to address upon non-linear optimization technique as a part of unit three. Unit four may be coming week and be starting. So if we look at non-linear optimization technique, GRG non-linear simplex LP, linear integer optimization. Uh, used for, sorry, this is a linear technique. GRG is meant for non-linear technique. The next is Evolutionary used for non-linear integer problem and a non-linear optimization problem as well. So there are two non-linear, one fit into linear technique. So that's all. So these two are meant for non-linear optimization technique. The first one is meant for linear optimization technique. So what is optimization is the first question. Is the art of finding a best solution for collection or collection or alternatives. So what is the method 
see, as I mentioned earlier, imagine you run a startup. Whether the project which you have got fully you want to do, fully you want to outsource, or partially the work you want to outsource, partially you want to do by your own. That itself automation problem. So you need to sit and work out the project delivery deadline is a threatening constraint or that is one of the threatening factor. Second one is the cost or expenditure involved. There are several then satisfaction quality. These are all constraint. If at all you are giving delivering to outside or if you are hiring new member, then how best the person is going to fit into your circumstances and what is the way you are going to calibre that person? Are you ready for hiring couple more staffing? So all those things fit into prescriptive analytics. You need to work on several constraints or optimization. You need to work on these all optimization. Several alternatives are there. The moment you get the project, what are all the alternatives? You can comfortably sit and you can outsource and you can make some more profit. Some more you should have negotiation skill. You need to speak to your client and you need to convince then within that budget with some amount of profit if you are getting, you can outsource. You can say that I am a software engineer. There is another way. You yourself can jump into the project and work hard and you can <coughs> keep delivering the project. What would be the drawback? You cannot think of further expansion of your firm. You will be messed up. You will be sinking into the you know, project. So you can't think of growth of your, in, your own firm. So never ever you can uh, you, you can take up the complete sole responsibility as a proprietor. Then you need to go for staffing. So how many members you want to recruit? That is also another question. So several alternatives are there for the small scenario I mean to talk. <coughs> This is where optimization technique comes to the picture. Every decision has a lot of constraint, especially this project. What is the constraint? Time of delivery. How many number of days you have? Then what is a project cost? If you are outsourcing, what is the charge that the vendor is trying to charge on you? Then will that project will make you to become profitable? What is the amount? The client is ready for convinced or ready for deal. So what is the price you fix it for the project? So these all those things you need to consider. So these are all constraint. Days is days number of available months or days is one of the constraint. The minimum number of days, maximum number of days. Always in the constraint you need to give the boundary. Similarly price. What is the minimum profit? What is the maximum profit? That is also you need to calculate and depending upon that you need to take decision whether you want to outsource or not. So these are all those situations you can think of optimization technique, whether it is minimization or maximization. The function only will vary, but both of the situation will have lot of uh, alternatives. Then where you can apply science, you can apply everyone can optimize, everyone optimizes application in science, design of experiment, engineering, power grid control and design, financing, pricing of options, optimal portfolio selection, medicine, optimal radiation, <coughs> dose design, economics. So complete economics are the financial data related to optimality, big data, machine learning, training of neural network. These are all those stuff uh, involves with optimization strategies. Ingredients of optimization. With that, let us stop today. <coughs> decision variables we need to take. Model, which model decision we want to do, we need to take decision. So number one, decision variable. Next, which model? Name of the model. Next, constraints. What are all the constraints available? What is the minimum and ma maximum constraint? Objective of our uh, prediction or model our goals or performance measure. What is objective minimum or maximum within that what we want to take decision of minimum optimization or maximize of maximized optimization. So these four 
this understand this is the mantra for optimization whether you do for non linear or linear with certainty without certainty deterministic or stochastic it doesn't matter what kind of name smoothing function non smoothing function these all i will be addressing shortly in the next session so whether you are using linear or non linear certainty or uncertainty smoothing or non smoothing for function so these all stochastic or deterministic whatever type of the optimization technique you think for these are all ingredient of optimization technique so objective function <coughs> next constraint which model every technique there are several ways to approach several tools to solve then decision variables all together uh, we need to approach the problem with that note let me conclude today then we can think of considering in the next session